Hello everybody, welcome back to another Trailmakers video, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a basic mech walker. Without further ado, let's get on with today's tutorial. So stick around till the end of this video to find out how to build this exact mech I'm showing right here. This super smooth, very simple, easy to build kind of walker mech we got going that is applicable for your bigger mechs. And can even jump. Alright you guys, so this tutorial, it's worth mentioning that this is more of an advanced tutorial, although I will be very descriptive and try and show how to do absolutely everything there is to do, but I do recommend changing some things around to get better results because you can always improve on your mech. Like there is no perfect mech, you can always make the walk cycle better, so just keep that in mind. You could probably apply this to a mech you want to build, you don't have to copy me exactly, as long as you get the logic right and the placement of the servos right, you're pretty much golden. So let's get on with the tutorial. Additional note, this tutorial will still work once Trailmakers 2.0 comes out. The literal only difference is, you know, this stuff will be in different categories. But other than that, this will still work. This tutorial is basically future proof because it uses no glitches. So first things first, once you have a seat down, uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to do this one. You're going to take a gyroscope and this is going to be your gyro for turning. So make those the controls you want to do for turning. And we're just, like I said, we're going to use a gyro for turning instead of like actually the legs because that gets kind of complicated. It's possible, but I'm not going to cover that in this video because that's more advanced sort of thing. So we're going to set the strength to about four. It doesn't have to be exact. And then we're going to want another gyro. And we're going to put it right under. And we're going to remove the controls and we're going to set the strength to 10. And this will kind of stabilize our mech. You'll see why that's important. So now we're going to get a large hinge and we're going to kind of make it so the green is facing up like this and place it on the other side like that. Make the green face up again. And now for angle, yeah, we're just going to leave that at 30. I'm not really going to touch it. You'll see why in a minute. And set that to zero, remove controls from it and then remove hold position. Next, you're going to want to get your gyro stabilizers. You might need more or less, depending on if you're making your own mech. If you're following this tutorial, you're really only going to need um, one normal, like one this way, and probably two this way, just to be safe. And then, for right now, we're going to set these to strength five, because otherwise the mech will be rather jittery. And then, on by default. Alright, you guys, so now we're going to get our servos here. Alright, so we're going to drag in our servo here. Oops. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to make the green face up like that. And now it's worth mentioning that you're going to want to make no adjustments to these angles right now. Just leave everything as it is. We'll do that later when we're hooking it up to the logic. And then we're just going to put this about right here on this little guy right here. Now we're going to copy this down. And we're going to flip it so that the green is facing down. And we're going to make the mech moderately tall. And then one more time, make sure the green is facing up again. So now you should have this kind of staggered look. And then we're going to hook these up. So you can make any fancy leg configuration you want. You don't have to copy this exactly. But I'm just going to take some of these flat connectors. These guys right here. I'm going to put them like that. And I'm just going to make a wireframe looking mech just so you can kind of see what's going on. So I'm just going to copy them again. Oops. And flip them around. And yep. Copy them one more time. You can kind of see we have this wireframe going on. And all you're trying to do is hook up each servo to itself. So like this servo is hooked up to the back of this one. But then the front of this one is hooked up. Well, it, it actually doesn't really matter where you hook it up, as long as they're not hooked up to two spots. Like, as long as they can all swing independently, it's okay. Alright guys, so now that you have, like, your leg kind of done, we're gonna do a foot now. So, you could either, you can make a foot out of suspension, if you're, like, making, like, some sort of parkour mech and you want it to absorb falls really well. Or, what you can do, is you could just make it out of straight blocks. So, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it out of straight blocks like this, and I'm just gonna kind of show you what it's gonna look like. So, like that, and I'm kind of just, yeah, so I think I'm going to leave it like this, 
So the way we're going to attach it is we're just going to use another flat connector, of course. I mean, you don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. And now on the underside of this foot, to make sure it has adequate traction, we're going to place some friction pads like these guys. And we're going to put one at the front and back like this. All right. So guys, we can copy this over kind of like bit by bit here. So next, we're going to want to copy over this little part and we're going to want to rotate it like this. Basically, you're just trying to reassemble the leg on the other side. So then we just need this last little bit right here. We can copy that over, rotate it to fit, and then we'll have to fix the leg. Alternatively, you could just repeat what I did on the first side if you don't want to do all this weird copy and paste stuff. And make sure you don't forget the little bracket here. So now we got two legs. If we go into our mech, you can kind of see. And you can already kind of see how it's going to work if you press your buttons here. But we actually don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do quickly is we're going to click on all our rotating servos and we're going to remove all controls from them. We'll add them back later, don't worry. And one more small thing you could do that actually makes a huge difference in the long run. And trust me, I, I think you should definitely do this. It can really make your mech walk a lot smoother. You can add suspension to the hips. So what I mean by that is if we move the legs out by one on both sides. Oops. Yeah. If we move the legs out by one, including the servo on both sides. All right, guys. So once you have your legs moved away, what you can do is we can actually just shift this gyro one back. We don't need that there. And we can slot in our suspension here and then we'll move the legs back. I just wanted to move them out of the way for you guys so you could see better. So now we can move the legs back in place like this. And we'll move them down one so they're not like fully inside of the thing. And now we have hip suspension for this mech. So now that we have kind of everything in place, there's a few more tweaks we need to make and then we can start the walking process. All right, guys, now that we have the legs kind of complete here, we're going to start working on the next step of the process, which is going to be the animation. And the first part of the animation is getting the poses right. And then we can worry about other stuff like the legs turning in the correct direction and all that super, super duper fun stuff. All right, guys, so the next step here is we're going to set the predetermined pose for our robot. Now, you can play with the parameters to kind of get this to look however you want, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But first of all, we need to go to this side, and we need to set this guy to make sure that's at 1. We need to set every single servo here to an angle of 120 degrees. And now we're going to set the strength to 30, and we'll adjust it later, depending on how we need to. And that's all for now. Well, actually, no, it's not. Set these guys, the top two on the left leg here, to be negative one. And then we'll set this guy right here to be negative one. And leave these two at one. And you'll see why in a minute. Basically what that's going to do is it's going to make the legs move in opposite directions, which is what you want. And now to start posing our bot here, we need one distance sensor. And we're going to need three... XOR gates. I suppose you could use four distance sensors, but this is just a more streamlined way of doing it. But like I said, you don't have to. So now you're going to hook your distance sensor into all three of these XOR gates and then into your two large hinges. And now I'm going to do an output value of 0.66 and we're going to see what that looks like. Like I said, all of this is trial and error. So you just got to kind of make it how you want to make it. And make sure this distance sensor is set to zero invert trigger. And yeah, as you can see, we already made a mistake. You always want to make sure that it's hooked up to the right thing. So yeah, make sure that's hooked into the large hinge. And now you can see that the robot kind of has its legs slightly spread out, which is good. I mean, you don't have to do that, but I think it looks good. So that's why I did that. All right, you guys. So I just color coded everything so you can kind of easily keep track of what's going on and what goes to what. And what's powering what and i'll make sure to do that for the walking guys as well so you can kind of see that everything goes into everything i mean of course you can see that with these little lines but it's easier to see this way anyways so we're going to take this one and this obviously goes to these rotating servos right here we're gonna hook them up and we want to decide what we want to set this to so i think i'm going to set the output so right now it's going the output is 1.0 and that's bad because that makes the leg go out like that. And that's not how you want it. 
So what you can do is you can play with this value to be at a number you want. Now keep it pretty low because we're going to make our mech walk later. And you don't want to make it too high or then you'll have problems making it walk. We're going to go to the yellow one and hook it up. All right, guys. So the final measurements are 0.1, 0.3, and 0.2. And as you can see, the mech is standing on its two feet in a more natural pose. And of course, if you really wanted to, you could invert the knees for that kind of inverted leg walk that a lot of mechs have. And it still works the same. It's just a little harder to do. That's all. And you can kind of see we have a natural look here. So now we start with the most important part of this entire tutorial, the walk cycle. So just for convenience sake, I'm going to move the logic here for the pose down here out of the way so you can see better oops not not right there that would cause a lot of issues so i'm just going to move the logic and kind of compact it and you can kind of see it's looking good so now the next step here is the walk cycle now this is the most complicated part but once you understand it you can make any mech work extremely easily it's not bad it's a lot easier than it looks, and honestly, once you build it once from this tutorial, you can copy and paste it to every mech you ever make. After all, that's what I did. Once I made my first ever walk cycle, I still use it today. I mean, of course, I've tweaked it, but I still use it. So we're going to go to logic, and we're going to get ourselves eight XOR gates, and we're going to put them in a nice line so it's easy to read. Oops. So we got four on this side and four on the other side just like this. All right, guys, so I have color coded these for you so you can kind of see what they're going to. So we're gonna hook this into this, but here's the thing. Here's what you have to pay attention to. The side that you have placed these XOR gates on is the side that they need to correlate to. Remember that. So we're gonna start with the left side. Now that's important. That's very important, just pay attention. We are going to start with the left side here so we're going to open this XOR gate and connect it to this white servo here. Then we're going to open the yellow one and connect it to this yellow one and only this one. We're going to open the white one again and connect it to this same white one. So we have two going into the same one. And then the green one goes into the green one. And now we do that on the other side. Now, if you mess something up in this process, this is likely where it happened. So just double check that everything's connected properly and you didn't accidentally connect something random. Now that everything's connected, it's time to input the timings. All right, guys, we selected all four on the left side, very important. And we're going to set the delay to 0.25, duration to 0.25, and pause to 2.5. We're going to set the green to W. And with this system, this mech cannot walk in reverse. Uh, that gets pretty complicated, so I'm not going to show you how to do it in this video. So once we have our system here, we have all these set like this. We're going to click off. We're going to go to this white one right here. We're going to click it. And now we're going to set this to zero like that. Now we're going to move on to the right side, assuming you're looking at it from the back here. So now we're going to click on the right side, click all four. Now set the, just the duration to 0.25 and just the pause to 0.25. Click off. And now we're going to click this white one and set the or er, the delay to 0.25. So it's kind of like the inverse of the other side. Now, you may be wondering, are we done? No, because this is what happens. Um, it does not work yet. And I bet you can see why. Side note, you guys, make sure that these also have green set to W. It's very important that you remember that. Otherwise, only one leg will work. All right, everyone. So I now have this thing tuned up and I'm going to show you the correct values for this specific mech that will make it run perfectly. All right, guys. So first things first, we're going to go into these two white ones at the front on both sides, and we're going to set them to an output of 0.5. Then we're going to go to the two yellow ones and we're going to set the output to 0.4. Next, we're going to go to the two white ones right here, and we're going to set them to negative 0.4. And lastly, the two green ones are going to be set at exactly zero. So 
in reality, we actually didn't even need the ankle joints. But depending on your mech, these parameters here are subject to change. If you built this exact mech I showed you in this tutorial, it will run perfectly. In fact, I will show you. This is one of the smoothest walking mechs I've ever made before. So if you build it exactly like this, this is how your mech will walk. It will run great and all will be good. And it runs about 25 miles per hour. Now, if you are building your own mech, especially if it's bigger or even if it's smaller, you will have to adjust these parameters a lot and it can be frustrating, but once you get it right, it will work as it should. A few things to note so that you guys can adjust the parameters. These two white ones control how far the leg swings out from the top here, from the hip. These two yellow ones control how far the knees swing backwards, like how, how much the knees bend during a step like that. These two white ones control the distance that the hip joints return. So how far back does this leg push when it returns? And then these two green ones on the end control the angle of the foot during the step, which that is definitely an important one to adjust because that can make or break your mech. I spend most of my time adjusting this guy right here. All right, guys, so this is pretty much it for how to build a very basic walking mech here. But I do want to show you guys a few things you can do to make this better. So first things first, if you want a jump, what you can do is you can literally just add pistons somewhere along this process. So for example, we can remove these guys here. Let me save it first. But what we can do is we can remove these guys and these guys like this, and we can get a nice old piston. All right, guys, so the way we're going to handle this is we're going to get a piston here, and we just need one, really. And then we're going to kind of move it down because we want the... Oops. The way we want this to work is we want it to kind of pull itself back up properly. So we're going to just kind of place a pipe. Now, you guys can make this aesthetic, more aesthetic if you want. I'm not really focusing on that. We're just going to copy it to the other side like that and get the same pipe piece put it like that and now if you go to these pistons right here uh you can change the speed to negative 100 start position zero auto reset and then go to the red and make that your jump button and what you're going to see here is it's going to start in the correct position so we can still run like we were nothing's changed it still walks fine but then we can jump like that it has little jumping feet and i think it works pretty well so you can get a running start like this and then jump all right you guys so i did want to offer an alternative to the jumping mechanic that i showed you it's less powerful but it's a lot more realistic so if you were going for more humanoid mech this method is definitely a lot cooler looking although it does not jump nearly as high and that of course is jumping the realistic way like how you would in real life with bending your knees but like i said it only jumps about like a foot off the ground so it's actually more of a crouch than anything, but you can actually still walk while doing it. So it's kind of cool. You can kind of like shimmy around and it looks funny. So for what it's worth, I'll show you guys how to do that. Let's kind of see it in action right now. Small little jump, little hop. All right, guys, you take three XOR gates. One goes to the top here like that. The I mean, the white joints. One goes to the knee joints. And one goes to these joints, and the configs are for the hips, 0.5, for the knees, 1, and for the ankles, 0.2. And that is how you do a jump like that. Pretty simple. And I think that's all I'm going to show you guys for today's tutorial. If you guys are curious in how to make kind of swinging arms to go along with this, I will make a tutorial in the future if you guys want that. So anyways, if you enjoyed today's video and found this tutorial useful in any way, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you want to. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.